What's good, guys? It's late, so I got to be a little quiet. But <clears throat> going to try to get some beautiful ass chords. So we'll just start with the piano. That's where I like to start. Now I'm actually using the keyboard. space it out Okay, that's not bad. I think we want to go for some major chords. So... Just trying to test the audio. Yeah, I think that's better. We want some major chords. So... This one's bunched up at the end. And yeah, these all gotta be longer. Yeah, these are just gonna be the the ghost notes in the framework channel so I'm just gonna drag them all the way it's not very interesting but it's just so you can see what the like the scaffolding is for the actual real notes later but let's see how this sounds I don't I don't like this transition it's very minor. We're going for major. Maybe we can just bump it up. 
one. I do like this more. That sounds almost triumphant, but these are not working now for me. Hmm. Sounds busy. I think we'll just stay with four chords for now. It's a little more basic, but yeah, something about this is just not right. I think we gotta go back up. Can we do A? when it uh, keeps on playing like that it means that one of these yep that one it, that that's the danger of having none so if it, if it if it keeps on playing and it's all silent like that just drag that one back to here and now it should loop at the end of the second measure <laughs> That sounds like uh that kinda sounds like y'all ready for this. Dun 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 So that's good. I think we're on to something. But I think we just gotta stretch all of this up. Let's Nope. Yeah. We're just going to make each of them their own measure. Okay, let's try that. That's pretty sick, honestly. For not knowing music theory, how about that? But that's pretty weak. I think that's called a diatonic chord. Don't quote me on that, but where they just all play at the beginning on the downbeat of each measure. It's like extremely basic. It is how most pop songs are structured but that's not how we do things around here so let's get a new piano i like how the e piano sounds and now we can actually well i think we're still trying to figure out the the sound right now so we'll leave the chord structure but we'll try to see how it sounds with some different voices now FL keys, go to plugin presets, go to generators, go to FL keys. These are the pianos. I usually start scaffolding with the pianos just because a lot of other stuff is going to sound pretty and it's going to hide the fact that the music is actually lacking so it's pretty hard to hide behind a piano um, but this E piano does sound good so let's see what these chords sound like now I like 
like that. I do like that. It's a little bit. It's a little bit distracting still with the E piano. Might just do how about the dark piano. Well, you know, you for rapid prototyping, you can actually just drag it on the same channel. So now it's a dark piano. sounds okay I think the chord structure we we can leave it where it is so pads are going to be your friend um, like a pad these are generally going to be very like airy sounding and they they generally only work when your notes are like maybe not a whole measure like this but at least like a half note um, it, it it's better for slower chord progressions and something like an arp like just so you guys can hear so like this is what the what the arpeggiator does so obviously that sounds like garbage but the arpeggiator takes what chords you have and it turns them into notes for you basically so it, it works when you have the keyboard jumping around but a pad not really going to be able to hear it if the notes are too short but like if we drag it on here see how that's just very airy and it kind of floats on top so what if we even have these together the piano and the pad I don't know, something about, something about going from here. It just sounds a little bit cheesy to me. Maybe we could bring it down one. We're going to have to mute the pad. It'll be like dissonance. So just the piano. doesn't sound different but I'm in the pads right now yeah it's easy to get mixed up so yeah we want to be in the piano notes The cheapest hack is to just because the fourth measure like the fourth chord in the progression is usually the hardest and a lot of times like a lot a lot of times like what comes to head right now is Justin Bieber sorry but like that's just one example they'll just have the fourth chord be the third chord so let's see what that sounds like <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously that's boring. That is boring. That's terrible. That's the same. 
What did we have before? Do we have this one here? Something you can do, it's called inverting the chord. Because you see how we're going from A sharp to A. So we can just make both these an A sharp. But now you see that instead of a C sharp, we have a D down here. And maybe that's creating some resonance as well. So we can actually, we can drag it down to C sharp. And so all we've done is just invert the chord, but it should sound different. No, that's terrible. That was terrible. So this is what I mean about painting yourself into a corner. The way these notes are going. And if you don't know music theory, it's kind of seeming like it just kind of converges right here. Even though I don't want it to. It sounds musically correct though every single option was sounding wrong to my ear so I mean you could start playing around with just the root note like delete these and drag the A somewhere and maybe it would take a minor chord hmm yeah wait one sec Yeah, so that just changes it from a major to a minor chord. How does that sound? It sounds interesting. So we're also going to invert it. It just it wasn't sounding different enough from this chord. So we just took the C sharp, dragged it down here, inverted. Now that doesn't sound out of tune, but it does kind of sound like the doorbell those old doorbells when you ring someone's house. Yeah, I don't know, I might just be too picky. But we'll just leave it how it is for now. So this is what I mean, like it's, it's hard to just trial and error all this stuff and I'm trying to not take up too much time but normally I would spend like a lot a lot of time trying to get these four chords right because this is gonna like determine the whole vibe of your song but for now I think we can just call it good <laughs> Let's see what it sounds like with drums. So yeah, if um, I'm pretty, because I actually have the paid version of FL Studio. Because if you just have the demo version, you can never save. But it, like it is pot. Like I used to just literally like keep my laptop plugged in, and like and change the the sleep 
to never and I think for like five years or something like like a long time I, I never bought FL Studio and so I would just like try to keep my laptop awake like for one week and so I would try to finish a song within a week and then just export it like file export to WAV file and so then you can listen to it on your computer and like push it to SoundCloud so you don't need the paid version of FL Studio but at a certain point it gets a little annoying to just not be able to save and just come back to something with like fresh ears and fresh eyes but so anyway I'm I'm pretty sure if you just have the demo version you get all this stuff for free like even the risers <laughs> drop but it has a lot of good drums a lot of good drums um, I think I usually end up it's a little bit confusing to navigate because like instruments and then legacy has instruments and drums and legacy drums drums mode audio so you just have to kind of explore but these drums are like your more basic drums like these kicks Most of them are junk, although the groove kicks, those ones hit really hard. Like that's hard. And so here's something that will save you some time. Right click, fill each four steps. There's your drums. I'm going to mute the pad right now. I think it's just doing, uh, you know, we're just going to delete it. It's more distracting than anything. And then I never use the snare. Just delete that too. And we can fill this one in, each four. Uh, maybe someone can tell me. I don't know a way to fill the clap in because you just want it every other so just have to do that by hand I do the claps on the red the beginning of each red group of four and then the hi-hat it's gonna go in between and in between the kick and the clap so it, it's it's the it's the third drum slot of each bar yeah like that so this is with with no instruments just the drums so I know that's basic but I usually stick pretty closely to that to like this structure like I mean you can add in like an open hat or something. Um, drums, mode audio, hi-hats, and then it's like, it's a O hat. Anything that says O hat is open hat. So it's like a ride, um, like a t, not just a t. And that can, that can give the perception of more movement and flow in your drums even though it, you're still just using the same like boots and cats pattern so like that's just classic EDM but yeah a lot of these just sound scratchy to me Yeah, this is the only one that does it for me. Let's see how that sounds. So, obviously, because they're on the same rhythm the hi-hat and the open hat are going to be conflicting with each other so you can either uh, delete all the hi-hats 
and then just sprinkle them in like around the open hat so like if we just play the first bar and then delete the hi-hat you can kind of like because we know that the open hats are going to be on the third one so you can kind of like go around the the open hat like that with the hi-hat but usually it's just going to end up being busier than you want it to be and i in my opinion the drums are just serving as like a structure for the listener and it's really going to be on you to fill in the gaps with like music and uh, even just like chopped vocals like yeah in my opinion you just want the drums to be as minimal as possible so what I end up doing is I will drag the volume down a bit So there you can kind of hear the hi-hat um, this would push you into EQ and stuff and maybe set the uh, the open hat like high on the EQ like th this is what I'm talking about you can just set the mixer channels here that's what these numbers are it's what channel it is so you go to here this is the like you can watch watch here this this tells you where your mouse is for like any button like snap to grid draw tool view mixer so this is your mixer channel so when you press play so that's where where everything is it doesn't get named uh, it just says insert one but you kind of want that because if you ever delete this, like if you delete this channel, then it opens up this mixer channel again. But like, like let's say we, we just selected groove kick and that's what this green highlight means. It means this channel selected. You can go to the mixer. I'm just gonna go far away so I don't mess with stuff, especially if you have a bunch of channels and you don't know where it stops I would just like go far down here channel route so sorry yeah so I'm gonna right click this channel routing root selected channels to, tr to this track and so now this groove kick that's that's not the kick that we had originally that's the one that I found just now and I added so now when we hit play you have to be really careful where you click as well like that's why normally even though like you could just click right here to get to the mixer channel um, or like the 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 mixer um, editor generally I just click here because you can click all these different buttons and if you don't know what you're clicking like sometimes I've just totally messed up and like like this is a knob and like yeah you just don't want to mess with any of that stuff so and like these are all presets for the effects and everything so basically I just generally try to navigate like this because if you want to click on this to get back to it and then you just added that and you're not doing boots and cats like this is very obviously not where it should be so you could just delete it and be like oh I shouldn't I, that was out of place but if you have a lot of tracks and all this stuff and then you just click somewhere randomly and you don't even notice then your song is going to sound off and you're just going to have no idea what happened and then if you're not saving frequently you're screwed so that's another thing you, you should be saving frequently like look i haven't even saved blah 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 just to save and, and then let's say you make some drastic changes like you're like okay we're done with this and you click here and drag this down and drag this up and you change what that is and if you don't not only save but you actually need to save as and so you hold shift and then you do control s so we'll do blah 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 v2 and so this is called version control 
and if you're not version controlling basically uh, at some point you're gonna be screwed and I've lost a lot of projects like especially early on and then it sounds good like you actually have something sounding good and you don't version control and then the EQ is all weird and you just have no way like you like control Z like edit undo has a limit to steps so there's going to be a certain point where you've actually like are past the, the max undos that you have and you literally just can't get back to that point so and I've usually found that versions like one through three end up sounding the best and four through like eight are just like too busy and so generally what I'll do like let's say that version two ended up sounding good then I'll start messing with version two and I'll have like a version two dot two and like that's literally how all those softwares that you download that's what they're doing it, that's version control and so generally most of my songs are actually like 2.2 or like 3.2 and so this becomes very important so sorry for the tangent but you want to be saving and you want to be save as in because now that I've saved this well so deleting a track is permanent so there's no undo for that so if I want to get back to the song that I was making for you guys I'd have to go to blah 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 and so now everything's back um, everything's back to normal here so you gotta 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 be saving and you gotta be save as in I, I generally like always save and then when you feel like I've made enough changes to where this is a different song and I don't know how I would control Z my way back to where I was that's when you hold shift and then do control S and just save it as a new version or like a new version dot version you know so that's the end of the rant anyways yeah so that's the very basic boots and cats with the open hat I mean a lot of the times I don't even mess with the open hat and if you don't have the open hat you can have some freedom like I mean, I literally just randomly click other hi-hats in. And maybe there'd be a point kind of in the middle where you just want the hi-hat to ride for a bit a little more frequently. So let's see how that sounds. So, you know, it's some variation. Honestly, my drum work needs a lot of improvement um, and I generally just rely on a pretty basic drum scheme but to me I just feel like the more complex your drums are the less complex your actual music and like instruments and like chopped vocals like it, I, I just see all these gaps in here as stuff where I can add in later so I'm really a fan of like very minimal minimalist drums So we see that we have groove kick on the mixer. So just to show you guys about EQ, I, oh, sorry. So you click this down arrow, that's gonna bring up this whole menu of all these. It looks like a lot and it, it is, but most of these you don't really use. So I generally use fruity parametric EQ 2 that's it looks nice this one is like just knobs and there's no graphical like visuals so this one looks good so now so this is for the kick and you you might think that you just want to blast up all the lows of the kick But I don't know, and YouTube compression is going to kill this, so I don't even know if you can hear it. But the, the clap just got so much quieter because you only have, you know, so much bandwidth, like your speakers and like your headphones and your ears. 
they they can only like, there's only so much to hear and if if you if you start just blowing up everything something else is going to suffer and so let's bring it back and you also want to be looking at the shape of the curve you can see that it's kind of peaking around two and then dipping and actually kind of peaking around seven and so a tip that i i mean i mean i didn't discover this but something that i kind of derived on my own is that i think you actually want your kick to have a lot of highs because it's not actually competing with that much the the clap generally lives around this five number and so will the open hat and then you actually your high hat will be around here around the six and the seven but because the kick and the hi hat are separated they don't usually end up like competing and so you can have the kick and the hi hat boosted up here so that's it's a little bit exaggerated right now because i'm just trying to show it for effect but and you can also boost this two down here So it, it generally, I'll make it exaggerated on the EQ because you can come back here to the mixer and you can kind of ease it off a bit. This is just like uh, the, the volume of the EQ. So kind of like the, the mixing percentage. So if you do here, it's not EQing at all. And if you do this, it's EQing 100. So you can kind of like go in between. So it's like a more subtle effect. Um, so yeah, if we just solo this. You can see it sounds very like snappy and like almost tinny and a little bit crunchy. So I mean, obviously you just have to play around with it. It's going to be different for every instrument like everything's going to be different every time and something is off sounds off yeah right here uh yep see that so you'll hear it when something's off I guess I misclicked or something but so now it's so yeah that's like the world's worst EDM song ever but uh, this is just our framework channel so now it can get a little bit interesting Um, go to plugin presets generators citrus is included as well I think most of these are included the, I, I bought uh, harmless because the sounds are like way more um, just like dynamic and full it's hard to explain a lot of the sounds on citrus sounds so flat and one dimensional and it takes a lot of work on your part to like make them shine like a few exceptions would be like the cerebra saw from citrus has a lot of harmonics harmonics and resonance but um like if we just mess with this like you can hear the vibrato and the sustain and I mean, that's just one. So, I mean, it's confusing. If you click the right arrow on presets, you'd think that you would just go from additive whirly FG to basic organ and you see, but you don't. It actually takes you to the first preset of the first category, which is 8-bit Wonderland FG. So I don't know why they did it like that, but to get back to where we were, additive whirly. 
uh, well you gotta do it from here presets keyboards additive whirly so now it doesn't say presets now it says additive whirly so now when you go it'll be the next one <laughs> sound a lot more like real instruments and they have like a lot more kind of effects on them uh, just right out of the gate and so I found that once I bought Harmless that a lot of my songs just kind of started to sound better even though I wasn't doing a lot differently um, so I don't know maybe that's cheating but I mean, I stayed with Citrus for a long, long time. So you, I mean, you can only make so many songs with the standard trumpet and so many songs with like the bell that they have. So yeah, you just want to think about what plugins you have and which ones you might want to invest in for the future. But um, I think. Uh, there's one called Formant or Flexure. Yeah, it's like very EDM. Like that just sounds so good. insane and that's just playing four notes down the keyboard so yeah definitely might have to invest in some plugins if you want to get serious but it's definitely possible to make good sounding stuff with citrus as well but this is the cerebra saw that i was talking about this one does sound pretty good too kind of hear the crunch in there and it's very hard to tune it out you kind of have to find the range where Cerebra Saw just doesn't crunch but I mean it does sound, it does sound hard for sure so it's kind of almost like get low or just like two thousands like crunk vibes you know like with like like Lil John should be going over this cerebra saw so yeah that that's a lot of theory but hopefully you guys learned how to set just a basic like drum framework so that you can start to build your chords and learn how to build some chords you know pick your your root note and then start building chords up from there and then if it doesn't sound right change it so and, and obviously making sure that it's still musically correct and hopefully you learned a lot about mixer channels and how to start you know getting into EQ and there's a lot of other effects I mean uh, you know we're already over time so um, I'll be making more videos though for sure guys peace